Welcome to my journey about building a cat tree. I'm a 19 years old future engineer and owner of this beautiful orange boy called Theodore, but we always call him Theo. I wanted to build a cat tree for my cat because he loves heights. He climbed on top of the fridge multiple times and even climbed up the piles of boxes of new lamps for my parents' retirement house. So here's how I did it. So here are all my materials. We have here are some branches. Some biggie boogie branches. We have these are the platforms that I've already cut because it's a project that was started um, <laughs> one year ago, unfortunately, and I never finished it. Uh, so I've got my lovely screw driver because I will need to do this all manually without a drill. The platform, I'll write the dimensions on a screen. So you can see what it is. I think it's uh, 62 centimeters by like 58 or something like that. It's not a perfect square. The first step will be to take off those screws because they're screwing everything. When you choose your base, you want to make sure that your base is big enough and heavy enough to prevent the cat tree from tilting and falling on the ground. A piece of MDF of 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters is really the minimal dimension. If your cat tree is really tall, you will need a bigger base to compensate for the height. You could glue together two pieces of MDF to add a little extra bit of weight, or you could even add some weight such as books on the platform if you see that the cat tree is a little wobbly. So now my base doesn't have any screws. So it's ready to go. So this is um, my plan. So as you can see, this is my first tree branch, which is this part. And the second tree branch here, which is this one. It's the big one. So the idea is to do uh, four platforms. One, two, three, four. Uh, the, fir the first two will be connected to uh, both of the branches. So as you can see here, there's uh, one branch that will support here, the platform, and another branch here that will support it. But um, I've also done a cut in my platform, just here, to make sure that uh, the platform will rest on uh, the biggest part of the branch right here. It's gonna do something like this. Uh, it's the same thing for uh, these two platforms, this one and this one. There is a little cut so that um, the platform can kind of rest on the branch. To make sure that the branches will be in the right position to place the platforms on them, I've made some little marks on the base and a little line on the tree that will go just like this. By aligning the line with the line on the tree branch, this will assure me that the tree is in the right position and orientation to uh, fit the pieces because I have some pieces that are connected, well, that, that rest on the two branches. So I need them to be both in the right orientation. You also want to do a pilot hole to prevent damaging your material, especially when working with wood because it could crack. After drilling your pilot holes, I suggest that you use carpenter's glue and long screws to make sure that your base is solid enough. You can be generous with the glue and take off the excess with a wet towel. For the size of the screw, you want to make sure that it is long enough to hold the two pieces together securely. You also want a shank on your screw. A shank is the little part of the screw that is smooth. Why you want it? Because it will pull tightly your first piece against the second one. So, since I don't know where to put my screw, top here, because I didn't make any mark, there's a little trick you can do and you just need your tape. So, take your tape. Go under, put your tape on the end of the branch, and simply slide it like this. 
and put it on the midi of the platform. So when you do put it on the other side, you know you can mark the end of your tape on the the platform so you have an idea of where uh, the branch is and you can do this for each side so you know a little bit more precisely where the branch is uh, so you can drill it right in the middle and not beside <laughs> So there's my little branch here and I've got my biggest one here. You want to drill a countersink in wood if you don't recover it with carpet and even there I would recommend doing it to prevent paw injuries to your cat. Let's see. Oh yeah. Right in the middle. <clears throat> Let's do this. I needed to uh, recut this piece because it wasn't fitting. So right now I'm just gonna um, retrim the platform so it's a little bit more smoother and there's no uh, big squarey angle. So let's go. I think that's enough glue. I may have put in a little bit too much glue. Well, honestly, like, put, put more glue. There is never enough glue. And you can just uh, wipe the rest off afterwards. Let's glue. Let's do this. I'm gonna put another screw, but this time it will be in diagonal, so I'll be sure that the base is really solid. So I will keep um, the tree like this for 24 hours before um, allowing the cat to finally test it and see if it works. When choosing the location of your cat tree, make sure that it is somewhere where your cat goes often. For example, my orange boy is an indoor cat and thus he likes watching the birds outside by looking out the window. So I've positioned my cat tree to be beside the window. You can also put catnip on the tree to make it more appealing to the cat. And I use catnip to make my orange boy discover the cat tree and actually go on the cat tree to understand a little bit how it works. I hope that you enjoyed the video and the tips and tricks that I shared with you. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to write them in the comments section and I'll try to answer to all of them. Bye! Shit, I broke it, I broke it, I broke it. Fuck, 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 fuck. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Damn it.